<laughs> we signed a Ouija board, okay? And it was like a very old one. After we both sign it, and she closes her eyes and looks down. Run around a demon. And you wonder why you have flat tires. So you're going to pick a house, uh -huh. and you're going to turn it <laughs> into the in Satan's den. Did you uh, say for a moment that the priest could have been possessed? You used to mess with black magic and stuff like that in the house. I told my mom, like, I need to go to my dad's house. Like, something isn't right. Don't freak out. Just know everyone is okay. Welcome to Haunted Homies, a podcast dedicated to building the paranormal community and hearing terrifying stories from those within it. Okay, we were trying to figure out how we could crawl up through the, the dungeon, but uh, we couldn't figure it out, so... Yeah. I, I ain't waiting down there. <laughs> it is scary down there. <laughs> just an hour in the dungeon in the dark just waiting for the show to start. Yeah, that's how we go insane. Oh, uh, okay, this is a cool moment for us because if anyone has seen any of the posters, flyers, images that we put out for tour, this is exactly where we took it. Corey and I were standing right there in April, yep. so basically a little over four months ago. We both stood right there with this weird, cool idea of how do we convert haunted, abandoned, historic places into like a venue to have shows at. Yeah. And we took that picture and we saw the chairs and we're like, one day we're going to fill them all up. And what's cool is we, we more than filled them up. We doubled and almost tripled the yeah. amount of chairs that were here. We only thought like 30 people would come out every night. So yeah, thank you guys. Yeah. Seriously. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we no, appreciate dude, it. Seriously, like, I will not forget that day, bro. Like, when we were just sitting here, we were, like, fantasizing. Like, just imagine we're doing a show. There's an audience. Everyone's watching. Like, I've been waiting for this place since the beginning of tour. Yeah. Like, I've been so excited to come back here. Originally, we were going to have people sit on, like, the second and third floors up there, but we weren't allowed to because I just wanted to have, like, a gauntlet. You know what I mean? Just, like, people just cheering. <laughs> And we'd be like, okay, you get to ask a question, but two of you have to fight for who and just make you battle it out. And then the loser goes to the dungeon. Yeah. And that was the original plan. And Corey was like, we probably shouldn't do that. Yeah, I mean, imagine if it falls through or something, you know? <laughs> this place would just be more haunted. In a hundred years from now, there's people ghost hunting. They're like, why are you here? They're like, we were watching a live show. <laughs> <laughs> like, make, make the REM pod go off. It was funny. <laughs> just, <laughs> nothing. They're playing the Ouija board. It's like, what brought you here, YouTubers? <laughs> <laughs> it, it's, a, it's a cool moment for us. This is actually day 25 straight on tour. We've been living in a motorhome together yeah. since August 8th, and today is September 3rd. Mm -hmm. So 25 straight days. Uh, apparently, we forgot to empty our waste tank yesterday. So our motorhome smells terrible right now, <laughs> which is why we're in shorts, because all of our pants smell like <laughs> Um, <laughs> yeah, it's either uh, it's either the motorhome smelling like <laughs> or a demon. We're trying to figure it out right now. <laughs> we haven't debunked it yet. We had 25 straight days starting in San Diego. We've driven uh, I think 11,000 miles so far. Wow. So we're just we're cruising along, but now we're right back where we where we took that first picture. And, and sincerely, thank you all for being here. It's yeah. it's really really cool. Yeah. yeah. Normally we have like a comedic game that we'll start with, but tonight we're going to have a maybe a bit more of a, a serious show. We have some really cool stories that have been submitted by those in the audience tonight that we're going to read. But of course we have like Patty who's here with us tonight and we really want to like kind of get into the thick of things with Patty because she has so much more knowledge and wisdom to share than what we show in our videos. A hundred percent. And also, I had something happen to me last night that has never happened to me before. Paranormal-wise. So really... Paranormal. <laughs> <laughs> what? Elton. I, did, I did have to like clarify. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, we have been in an RV together for a while. <laughs> yes, paranormal-wise. paranormal, -wise. paranormal -wise. I, I, really, I really want her opinion on it. I want, I want to see what she thinks. Well, let's just get right into it. Let's just bring Patty on stage. Patty, would you please join us up here? Please give her a warm round of applause. Uh, you want to bump over? I'll do that, yeah. Hi, everybody. Thank you. Hi. <laughs> Main thing, you were with us yesterday in Chicago, which meant you slept in the motorhome with us. I did. And drove six hours with us. I did. You can confirm the motorhome smells horrible. It's not really fresh right now. <laughs> <laughs> I, I go with that glass half full, you know, feed the good wolf thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How was your experience living with eight other uh, humans in a small box on wheels traveling at 70 miles an hour? Um, bouncy. 
<laughs> Bounty. No, it, you know, I, I like adventure and there's adventure travel like you're climbing Mount Kilimanjaro or mm-hmm. you're, you know, going in whatever. Or it's eight people in a Winnebago. It's, it was good. I like, about, I like a challenge. <laughs> eight people in a Winnebago that's legally meant to hold five. Yeah. Uh, uh, don't cut that out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Edit, edit that out, Marty. What, the Winnebago, please? Yeah, the Winnebago, please, yes. I want to beg you to not arrest me. Sorry. Um, okay, so do you want to ask about all the, all the issues we've been having? And okay. Can we start there? I, I really want your opinion. Since the beginning of tour, we have had so many issues with the RV and also with the truck dragging the trailer that has all of the haunted items in it. We've had how many tires popped? Six? We've had now six tires pop. We had um, the RV flooded. Like, the, like, we're lucky to even still have the RV. Like, the entire bottom of the RV was flooded with water. Like, we're lucky it didn't get into the walls. Yeah, we've had our, uh, our motorhome has jacks on it to level it out. Those have broken. Our side view mirror at one point just unscrewed itself and was hanging on by one out of four bolts. Um, we've had, like, every possible thing go wrong. I think it's just because I waited to the last minute to buy a trailer, and I bought something kind of uh, but no. Corey blames it on the Haunted Museum that do you we're think, carrying. Do you think that it could be the Haunted Museum that we're bringing with us? Like all the Dybbuk boxes, all the haunted dolls, the haunted items that we have with us, could they be causing the issues? Uh, what I think, and being the Libra that I am, I think you're both right. I think, yes, if it was a brand new oh. Winnebago, you'd get less. But haunted objects are going to call it in. Everything's energy. We are energy. Ghosts are energy. We know that. Nothing solid. You know, seventh grade science. You guys are out living in the uh, beyond the veil world. Paranormal. Asking for the paranormal. You've got haunted stuff in the car. Of course it's going to happen. It's just like like a volcano in a sense. So if anybody's going to hit the nail, you guys are going to hit the nail. Yeah. Because ghosts go... A lot of nails, for the record. A lot. A lot of nails. A lot of of screws. Yeah. So, you know, a Winnebago goes by, the first Winnebago, and it's just a family going on vacation. The next Winnebago goes by, it's some little tour group. And then your Winnebago goes by, it's like, oh, that's Elton and Corey. (laughs) We're going to stop. Yeah. (laughs) That's it. All right. You don't think it has anything to do with the fact that like we are legitimately triple overweight what we should be towing with eight people in a motorhome meant to hold five and we're just irrational people that kind of bootstrapped a tour no, that's that maybe not a, I could have put more n- time and energy into planning out? Uh, no, I think that is half of it too. Again, okay, that's yeah, what yeah. I said. <laughs> had you had a brand new Winnebago and there were five people in it, maybe less flat tires. Okay. But less, not none. Mm. Mm. Do you think that any of the spirits of the locations that we're going to could also play a part of it? Like while we're inside doing stuff, they just put a nail in our tire? <laughs> that, that are the little marmot things. Yeah, the, the little groundhoggy things out there. Oh, but yeah. yeah, no, again, energy begets energy. It's like a spotlight. Our realm of existence is our realm of existence. The other side, you guys... Like, we have a spotlight right here, or a spotlight. So it really, really does. We're going, or you guys are going to places that have this high energy, high spotlight. Haunted things, prisons, of course. You know, again, if you were just hanging out at the Elks Club somewhere, not so much. Okay, okay. I feel like everyone should now know what you tease them about that happened to you for the first time ever last night. What? I didn't tease nobody. What are you talking about? I mean, you were like, something happened to me last night that's never happened before, and then you just didn't tell them. <laughs> it's a okay. bit of a tease, is it not, Corey? Okay. So, all right. So this, this is while you tease them, I'm going to take my sweatshirt off. I'm going to tease them while you. Tease Elton, them. Yeah. It's, you know, it's so <laughs> hot. It's so <laughs> hot right now. Uh, what were we uh, talking about again? So, like I was saying, uh, <laughs> shake it. Last shake uh, it. last night when uh, <laughs> we were uh, investigating, and uh, sorry. Um, so last night, like this has never, this has honestly never happened to me before. And I've seen shadow figures, you know, I've seen stuff like that, but what happened last night, I really can't explain. And as soon as it happened, I didn't freeze in fear, but I just went complete silent and I just walked away and I just needed a minute to myself. Um, we were in a hall, like a, like a cell area and I'm looking down the hall this way. And as I look back, there was like a little girl, probably like 13, 14, and she was probably this tall. And I come back and we're just staring at each other, making eye contact. Like she's less than a foot away from me. And when I first processed it, I was just, you know, I'm looking at someone that's doing the investigation with us, you know, from the tour. But then after not even a second goes by, 
she vanishes right in front of me. And so I kind of just walked away and I'm like, what the f did I just see? And as I'm processing it, I also realized that she was black and white and she was also see-through. Why do you think I saw that? Well, I think you saw that because she was there. And over these last few years, since I've even known you, how much you've turned on your site. You've turned on your second sight. You've worked on it. You live in this world. So she was there all the time. And other people at the other tour may not have seen it because they didn't see it. Like if I'm doing a seance or something like that, you know, me and maybe a couple of people at the table will see this guy over here, this girl, but nobody else does. Mm -hmm. But I think it was your first time you've just developed that much more. And what I got that she really was a little girl, a young girl, teen girl there to visit her father. Yeah. And, and the ovulus said, literally right after I saw her, the ovulus said, daddy. And, and I don't think she really remembered what her daddy looked like. I think she was young when he went to jail, you know, and... I think she probably died young. That's why she showed herself. But then she, you have this beautiful, approachable way of being. And like, Daddy. <laughs> so she came to you. And it was this one of those perfect storms of turning on your gift. So get used to it. Oh, God. So, so next time... <laughs> So next time, again, if, if it feels negative, of course you say go away. But if yeah. it feels positive, maybe you could have helped her. I mean, to talk to her. It, it did not feel negative at all. Yeah, no. But like now that like you're saying, I really wish that instead of me kind of just walking away and kind of being to myself and super quiet for like 30 minutes, I would have went right into like, why did you show yourself to me? Like, how can I help you? Because on this tour, I've been doing that a lot. I've been, honestly, I've been trying to help spirits that are like stuck, like cross over. Like I've been reading so many prayers and like talking to a lot of spirits. And after I'll read prayers, the activity will stop as if they actually crossed over from that, you know? But it's just, I've never seen that. Like even when I was a little kid, you know, when I was like 14 or 15, whatever, and I saw the shadow man for the first time, it wasn't a face. It wasn't a person. It was just, a, it was a shadow. And last night, it was a little girl and she was see-through, less than a foot away from me. And then she vanished. I've never experienced that. Do you think that it's because you opened the veil? Well, I think that def definitely, and that we're going to do that again tonight too. It's like, again, kind of cleaning off your glasses a little bit for your psychic view. So it, it'll be hearing and smelling and tasting and feeling and just knowing all the different clairaudient, clairvoyant. So we did lift the veil. And again, you're really gifted and been working on it. So yeah. Yeah. Can I, can I just point out that uh, we were at Old Joliet last night, mm -hmm. which is a place that has no history no documentation, no stories ever at all about little girls being there. And you saw that, which makes me wonder, was it the prison? You get what I'm saying here? There's no stories. It was all male prison. You're saying like a demon pretending to be a little girl? Or just something's been following you along. Like as soon as you said little girl, <laughs> look, look, at, look at any paranormal story from there ever. You will never see anything about a little girl at Old Joliet. I like Patty's idea. That, <laughs> you know. Well, Patty's just, you know, she's being nice to you. And I'm here to go, Patty, Patty's flight is tomorrow. I got to deal with you for another eight days on tour. So if we got a little girl in the motorhome, we need to figure this out now, <laughs> okay? Because we need to find her daddy and it's not you. Correct. And we need to drop her off at the nearest haunted daycare because I am not going to take care of her. Well, I really did. <laughs> Maybe think that's why the motorhome smells so bad. It's your little demon girlfriend. <laughs> Wait, not, not girlfriend. Sorry, child. Daughter. Daughter, daughter. My bad, my bad. That's my, my bad, daughter, my bad, my bad, Elton. My bad, my bad, my bad. Not that weird. <laughs> I actually thought so, the like, little... Look, if she's a ghost, maybe she's like 180, okay? Even though she's a little girl. So, I don't know. <laughs> Getting Get better That's by my the daughter you're talking about. <laughs> Um, you don't even know her name. Shut up. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I actually w was going. I, with the little guard shacks there look like little playhouses. I'm like, why do they have little kid playhouses on the grounds of this prison? But it was a guard shack. But they look like little kid playhouses. Um, well, we're going to mm. cleanse him today, tonight, before we leave, before I jump on my plane. It's easy to do, you guys. Release, let go. When you're leaving, say, you don't get to come home with me. You know, there's a million ways to do it. Just pick one that works for you. Can we use yeah. a sponge? We could use a sponge. Yes. 
What, how are you going to cleanse me with a sponge, dog? Oh, you know how. <laughs> <laughs> Slowly. Yo, what a weird sentence. How are you going to cleanse me with a sponge, dog? <laughs> what a weird thing. You know how. <laughs> <laughs> Just like last night. <laughs> hey, that's another RV story, okay? That, that's, a, that's a different RV story. Oh. Okay, but do, like, do you think... You get what I'm saying? Like, do you? Do you think- okay, what do you? I want Patty's opinion. I'm, go, I'm going back to Patty. Do you think that it's something attached to me, or do you think it was just a spirit that's wandering around looking for her dad? No, I honestly do think it was just a spirit who's wandering around looking for her dad. I'm sorry, Alton. Sorry. We'll come up with something else. Maybe we could attach something to him tonight. Oh no. yeah, 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 yeah. 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 <laughs> something worse than a cute little girl. <laughs> Why? No. Oh yeah. Just, what? No. Why would no? No. You, we're that's not. El- we do that to Elton, I, not okay, to me. Okay. We won't. We won't do. You're it supposed to, you. to cleanse me tonight. I'm and Patty's like, you. let's get the devil attached to him. <laughs> this, is a, this is a perfect place, though. It's the bloodiest 47 acres, Missouri State Pen. What a beautiful place for you to get multiple attachments. No, it's Why don't okay. we do this? Let's take you down to the dungeon. Let's just string you up by one arm, one leg. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like attach a bunch of EVP recorders to you, some Tesla <laughs> coils, and just channel all the energy into you your body. some K2s to my toes, <laughs> and I'm just, I'm just swinging back and forth. <laughs> no, it's okay. Okay. Um, do you also know that last night I was called daddy? Yeah. We really are getting some of our best evidence we've ever got on this tour. Yeah. Do you think it's because we're going to so many locations in a short amount of time? Yes. That's why we're getting like the best activity ever. Yeah, because again, that spotlight I talked about with the thing that'll put, you know, t- holes in your tires will also amp the experience, amp, amp everything. And you guys are getting lighter and lighter uh, as far as able to see. Hmm. Yep, you call it in. Hmm. I, have a, I have a weird feeling too, it has something to do with the amount of people that we're bringing. Like there's so much more energy Right, when we go to Death Row, last time we were there, when we filmed there in April, it was like four of, four of us, five of us, and now we went in there with nine, ten of us. Yeah. There's just so much more energy going on that I feel like that helps a little bit, too. Yeah. Because um, we're all batteries. People are batteries. That's why you get tired afterwards or drained afterwards. So, yeah. yeah You're the, all batteries. The amount of people during investigations from this tour that are like, you can use my energy. If you want to follow me home, you can. <laughs> I'm like, you can take over the channel jesus christ like y'all are nuts yeah, i would never say that i'm not trying to put this person on blast but this dude like okay it takes a lot to scare me yeah we're it's like 4 10 in the morning everyone's like being super quiet we're using like the fasten box and we're chilling and this one dude literally just does this he sits still he does this right here he puts his hands up and he goes you may take all of my energy and do as you please i am your vessel and use me and i'm like <laughs> he hasn't Smoking all night. <laughs> that was like the first time he smoked and he kept going and then he started speaking in Spanish, but it kind of sounded like Latin. I'm like, oh, this is the end. <laughs> like, oh, God. He, he was such a nice dude, but like literally went from not speaking to like, take me and use me how you want. <laughs> <laughs> and we're on the fifth floor of a building with one staircase and he's blocking the exit. I'm like, no. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> but I mean maybe it worked because we got some cool stuff that night. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Okay, I I'm not trying to put this person on blast. <laughs> okay. But dude, about her now. this scared the <laughs> sh- out of me, guys. So this was during like a meet and greet a couple of days ago. Dude, you didn't see this happen. I was so scared and I still don't know what's gonna happen or if we're okay. We <laughs> signed a Ouija board, okay? Yep. They asked us to sign a Ouija board and it was like a very old one. After we both sign it, we walk backwards and I'm still looking at her and she's holding the Ouija board, like just facing the ground and she closes her eyes and looks down. And this is all I heard. And it went on for like 10 seconds, but she literally goes like this. She's like, run around a demon. Oh no. Yes. Oh no. So I don't know if we're cursed. I don't know what the about That's to happen. That's where the little girl came from. <laughs> from the Ouija board. Just shut up. No. <laughs> No. Wait. Or your Latin lover. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> no, okay. no, I was going to him. It could have been his boyfriend, not yours. True. Huh? Very true. It could have been my boyfriend? Yeah. No, yeah. Papa. <laughs> all the little, all the, the guy that called you Papa disguised as a little girl to see me to not scare me. That's what that's. Hold on. He staring. called me daddy and then tried to cheat on me by turning into your daughter. Okay. Uh, this is literally Ghost Jerry Springer. That's exactly <laughs> what is now. Jerry. Jerry. <laughs> Yo, everybody do it. Jerry. Jerry. 
Jerry. Yo, also, our, our Jerry's like our merch dude, and I wonder if he just hears that. He's like, what did I do? What did I do? <laughs> Jerry's just like... <laughs> <laughs> Can we be in trouble because we're signing Ouija boards? Is that bad? I don't think so. Honestly, okay. I've been safely using Ouija boards since I was a little kid. I don't think they should be in toy stores. I think they should have a completely opposite set of directions. Like, this is not a toy. But, you know, we are... It's movies in Hollywood that made them into a bad thing. They used to just be a communication thing. It's so funny. Somebody who's like not afraid of, of, of dowsing rods or tarot cards or a pendulum, but they're scared of a Ouija board, they're the same. They're all just portals to whatever. We've made them worse, so therefore we have, by making them so scary. But just signing them, even she was probably just trying to use your energy to charge the board, even if she was doing some magic, dark magic, light magic, the fact that she was holding it down and chanting down, um, to me it would mean more energetically that she was trying to use... I mean, these guys have big energy, right? Both everything, all their followers and the world they've created. You're you're starting to f***ing scare me uh, (laughs) right now. Do you have any... We've signed probably 100 Ouija boards in the last 25 days. And you wonder why you have flat tires. No, just kidding. (laughs) No, no. Don't do that. Don't do that. Hey, don't... Don't no, 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 uh, no. See, and people always hear the bad stuff, not the good stuff. If somebody says five things, four of them are good, one is bad, they hear the bad. I started it out with no, I don't think that you can be hurt by signing Ouija boards. But you changed pretty quickly. Yeah. I know. <laughs> Um, no, I don't. I don't think you can. If you believe you can, you can. He because, believes we can. So. Well, no, that's that, that self fulfilling prophecy thing. Just like somebody mm. says, "I'm going to curse you," they never think of you again. You create your own damn curse. So don't create your own damn curse. Okay. 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 Right. I like that answer. So do we need to stop signing Ouija boards now? <laughs> Should no. we? We can. We can continue. Yeah. Yeah, you can continue signing them and just say, "I let go of this right now. I'm not bringing it home." I'm, Even just every, the- I'm gonna have you sign first from now on, and then I'm just gonna also sign in your name. <laughs> I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna double down on you for now. On. You know how many times when I sign a Ouija board, I just change my signature just a little bit, <laughs> like so that. it's not my exact signature. And that's gonna trick the demon. I hope it does. It's I like, oh, this is Corey Shear from Indiana, not the one from Florida. <laughs> right? He did his R differently. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. You should just change the E to an A so that way you're Corre. Corre. <laughs> just Corre signs Ouija <laughs> boards, not Corey. Corre. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Can we, speaking of things we probably shouldn't be doing, um, can, can we vet an idea with you that I've had before? And if anyone went to the Pythian show, um, you saw me bring this up very casually, um, but it's something I really, really, really want to do. Okay. So I guess I'll preface it by, do you believe that you can manifest a haunting? Like, can you create something that is haunted? 100%, yes. Okay, perfect. So let's see what you think of this f***ing idea. <laughs> Uh-oh. So I've had this idea, and strangely, the reason I'm bringing it up tonight is I had the idea in at Missouri State Penn. We're in the other side of the building, and I don't remember what we were doing, but all of a sudden this idea just sparked in my brain that was like, this would be a really cool experiment to do. So what I want to do is I want to find a house, probably in LA, somewhere near where I live, that has absolutely no data, no recognition, no past history, nothing of being haunted at all. And I want to bring in like five or more independent paranormal investigation teams, have them all investigate, and the goal is for all of them to be like, no haunting. Mm -hmm. And then what I want to do is I want to take that same house and I want to find 13 different people that need exorcisms. And I want to perform 13 different exorcisms in the house. But after each one, I want to have that same paranormal investigations team have them come back in and see if it gets any more activity. And after 13 exorcisms, then start bringing in other items and see, can you actually manifest and create a haunted house? Who got goosebumps on that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I think it's a horrible idea. And I, I, So I'm doing it. No, yeah. I think, yes, exactly. I think you should do it. And the I stamp bet of you disapproval will, that I needed. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. No, and I, I bet you will completely do it. I bet you will, because you're doing exorcism. You know, it's like the like the dandruff that falls off of whatever. You're not gonna get even if you cleanse it, and you're not gonna cleanse nope. it. So you will create I mean, that's how bad places were created, like going back to the Cecil Hotel, going to this place, they weren't born haunted, but bad things that happened, negative energy that came in, dark energy that came in, repeating, repeating. It's just like 
gray water or black water in your yeah. RV. It gets it collects and collects and then it is. Yeah, I don't want to obviously like right have like a Richard Ramirez kind of have to stay in my house to make it haunted. Like at the same time, if if you're, it's almost like a double-edged sword. Except one side's doing something great and one side's doing something uh, not. Um, and that the first side is you're performing, you're helping people, right? Yeah. You're finding people that need exorcisms that have possession that have these like horrible things that are attached to them and you're saying hey we'll we'll take care of it we'll get you the best service possible but i want to keep it you know it's like a dr pimple popper except i keep the pus like that's <laughs> kind of what it sounds gross but you guys are probably gonna f-ing visit there so <laughs> but that's kind of like what i'm i'm, I'm thinking and then i really want to see like can you essentially trap it all in where it cannot leave the house whatever you need to do there if you need to take the fence line and bless the fence line in holy water and you know and pour salt everywhere and whatever it is that you need to do to keep it trapped within the property line can you essentially create like instead of a dibic box a dibic house yes and if anybody could do it you could do it yes wholeheartedly will don't you? tell him that and you could help no will, yeah. will you help will you help yeah I'll help I'll, I'll go yeah I like a challenge <laughs> Uh, I, I will. And again, what, do you want to be like property go, manager of the evil spirits? <laughs> yeah. Like, what do you what do you think? I have property manager, some scary house in like the San Fernando Valley or something. Yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> um, yeah. Sure, I will help. I, again, I like a challenge. And again, that you you keep it contained, and that is good. And you cleanse yourself when you leave, so you don't take it home to the house you live at. Yeah. Yeah, I honestly want to like figure out a way to do like almost like air chambers where you like walk through the front door, right? Like when you go into like an atrium where a bunch of birds are, you go through the first door, then you, then you close out when you go into the second door. So that way the birds can't get out. Like I'm, I want to like take it at that level where like I want to know that anything we trap in this house cannot leave. But at the same time, like probably give everyone like a sponge bath on their way out too. You know what I mean? What is up with you and sponge baths <laughs> today, dog? Yeah. No, put in lots of mirrors. I think that's a great idea. Go Ooh, for lots it. Lots of mirrors. Okay, lots what else? Let's, let's decorate our house together, huh? <laughs> yeah. What else should we do? A bunch of black candles. A black candle. Well, black candles pull out negativity. As scary as that seems, and like they use it in horror movies. I would, if I wanted to get rid of something, I'd use a black candle. Okay. Uh, white candles are good. They bring in the light, but Perfect. black candles Perfect. White pull candles. It. Love it. Okay, what Red else are we thinking? Candle. Red candles. Um, Red candles. Okay. Uh, um, but with everything else really is about intent. But of course, mirrors magnify. Mirrors are portals. Um, if energetic things, there's things like round things can keep things moving or not. Staircases, as we've seen, even like at the Biltmore, round staircases. Okay. So even staircase. if it's a one-level house, but something that's spirally like that, lots of things you could do. Okay, so let's put a spiral staircase in the center of the house, wrap mirrors all around it, and then you have to walk through the spiral portal up into the attic where the terrible things happen. Though so not very many houses in Los Angeles have an attic. We can we can make it. Okay. We'll build one. We'll build okay. a custom one. We will build it. Okay. Okay. I don't like this. Why? I'm literally in the middle, and you guys are just like we're gonna put a demon here. We're gonna get some mirrors over here. <laughs> <laughs> we'll give them all bedrooms. You know what I mean? Like just 13 different rooms. They can have their own room. And it's like who do you, who do you want to stay Air, with tonight? Airbnb. Yeah. Are you really gonna do this? Yeah, dude. <laughs> but don't you don't you think that someone could go crazy even just entering the house if there's that much negativity in there? Waivers. <laughs> so, so it doesn't it doesn't matter if they go crazy so long as they don't sue you. It's fine. Yeah. Well, no, they could, but again, have... Yeah. They would have to know what they're getting into and then you would have to have nice prepared things on their way out. Okay. To, uh, you know, whether you're sitting there with Palo Santo or eggshells or crosses or what, anything, held them all, this little thing, anything. Think about it. Every time you go to like an Airbnb or hotel, they give you like little, you know, pocket size, kind of like shampoo bottles. <laughs> we just give them like little, little bottles of holy water and <laughs> some sage, you know what I mean? And some, some bath salts, but it's actually salt, yeah. uh, you know, for cleansing reasons. So, yeah. I guess that would be kind of cool. I think, it would, I think it would work. Let's do I it. think it'd be the most popular Airbnb around. Look at all these people came to see ghosts. Okay, so yeah, wait. Yeah. I, I, let me ask a question. Okay, make some noise if you would stay in there. <laughs> Y'all did not help. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like we're already booked out to 2024. <laughs> oh my, you're really going to do this. Absolutely. Absolutely, and and the great part is because I want to find a house that has no haunting to it at all, I can probably actually find a really cool house because like, if you want to find the houses that do have history to it that are probably haunted, they're probably more like, you know, raggedy, kind of worn down houses, 
But in this case, I could probably find a house in a really cool, like almost remote location. So you're gonna pick a house uh-huh. in a super nice neighborhood, yeah. you know, <laughs> a lot of new families just moved in, mm-hmm. and you're gonna turn it <laughs> into the f- Satan's den. <laughs> yeah, dude, I'm gonna paint it completely black. I'm gonna put barbed wire <laughs> outside around. the house. <laughs> The outside of the house is just pitch black. Dude, there's, there's, a, there's a house in Santa Monica on the beach that is like that. It's like right next to the super colorful one. So they beat you to it. Yeah. <laughs> I, th- I think this would work. I think it'd be really, really fun to do it. Can you manifest the world's most haunted house? Wow. I, think you, I think you could. You know what this, though, I'm thinking right here is we're sitting here in this prison. This must be your creative space, Elton. Didn't you just say that you created kind of this tour and think about it right here? Yeah. And this was this project. So that's your next project created right and look, here. Look how well this project has gone, huh? Look how well this tour has gone. It's been a great idea. But they're not going to sleep in a room with Satan. I think if, look, I think if there was a ticket option where they could say VIP was Satan, they would probably would have all done the upgrade. <laughs> I'm not even going to do the cheer thing. I already know y'all are going to cheer. <laughs> <laughs> For all we know, Satan's in the middle of the audience right now. <laughs> oh, God. Okay. All right. Well, I, I have a question for Patty. Okay. A lot of the places we've been going to, I've been asking, you know, a lot of the employees, why do they think the spirits are stuck there? Because a lot of spirits, when we're doing SDs and from other stuff, we're getting help me, like help us, like we can't leave. And when we talked about it, I believe it was yesterday, you were saying that you believe that spirits that were there, they could leave if they wanted to, or they had a chance that they could leave, but there is a dark energy holding them there. Yeah, I think, again, regular haunted things are like the ghosts that visit all you guys' houses and our houses. They hang out because they can, because they want to, or they know somebody's kind of got the gift here. When you get to the dark places, the help me stuff, usually something bigger and darker, whether demonic or just a self-created, like an egregore or something, again, all this negativity has created a spirit of its own, self-created, and that holds it down. I think that's at a lot of places. I think... The Cecil Hotel, again, going back, is like that. I even think the Black Dahlia House. Um, Yes, the doctor who killed all those women is holding those women there, including the Black Dahlia, but something deeper and darker than him has been created by all that evil. That's a good street name for the the Dybbuk House. What? Egregore Ave. Oh, yeah. And egregore is a manifestation of evil, is it not? Well, egregore is a manifestation of self-created. It doesn't have to be negative. Okay. It, it doesn't have case, to be it, negative. It will be. Uh, <laughs> you have to look for Dark a house Egregore that just house. has 666 on it for the oh address. Oh my God, 666 Egregore Ave. Ave. <laughs> but we'll spell Egregore. It'll be, instead of G-O-R, it'll be G-O-R-E. Oh, Gore. Egregore yeah. Ave. Yeah. I like this. So thank you, Corey. You're contributing so much <laughs> to this delightful idea. You're welcome. I can't wait for you to stay there every Friday the 13th forever. No. <laughs> Dog, if you think, I, I mean, okay, I'll go in the house when it's a normal house. <laughs> but like, I literally was thinking about that. Like, would I want to be in there and watch like an exorcism happen? Yes, you would. Yes? Yes. Could I be protected during an exorcism? Yes. Yes, like, you like, can. Like there's a, like there's, I could do something that'll completely protect me every time they do one in there. Yeah. Great big hefty bag. We'll put, yeah, no, you Wait, could. Tra- <laughs> I'm going to hide in a trash bag? <laughs> Wait, this whole time demons can't see through trash bags? <laughs> Not the really thick ones. Okay. I, I want to, it'd be so funny, do like a vape trick, but like the, the priest like pulls out the demon, and he's like, <laughs> 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 just, just throws it in your mouth. You just blow an oath at you. Just <laughs> boom, boom, boom. Yeah, I'll pass on that. I'll definitely, I'll pass on that. I'm excited to do this idea. It'll be nice. You know what I mean? Spend some more quality time together. You know what I mean? Help some people out. Harm some others. It'll be fun. (laughs) You know? He likes a balance. Yeah, yeah, you do like the balance. Yeah. Do you think people going in there could get possessed? I think... I think they could, um, but again, if you set it up right, that's why if you do have me or someone like me, then you could do it. You can get a little bit possessed kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit possessed. A wee to wee. Just a wee bit possessed. <laughs> but could we you, could, could get- you explain a little bit possessed? What is that like only while you're in there, you're feeling different? It's kind of um, sounds like you? your memoir at the end of our ghost adventures, <laughs> like a little bit possessed <laughs> by Corey Shearer. <laughs> That's a perfume. That is, a good, <laughs> that is a good perfume. Yeah, no, I really think if you do it, that it's, it's again, like, 
you know, you, you fall down this far, but you don't fall down this far. And again, if you on the way out, you have the little like cleansing station, whether it's a sponge bath or a bunch of other things along the way to do it. Yeah. Have you seen like Resident Evil, like where they're exiting kind of like the quarantine rooms and they just like spray you? Yeah. Like you're in like a mister. We're definitely going to do that. Yeah. I'm just going to get like a misting machine. It's just going to... It just yeah. sprays holy water. Yeah, dude, it just douses you in it. Yeah, that's cool. Holy water and some Florida water because that's really cleansing. Florida water? Oh, Florida water. Wait, what? <laughs> oh, you don't know Florida water? Wait, Tell me Florida about Florida water this. itself has to be the nastiest, most demonic Florida water you can imagine. No. Well, Florida water is used in cleansings even more than holy water because people who aren't necessarily Catholic don't get what... Cl- uh, holy water is. Florida water actually it kind of means flower water. You could buy it in any occult shop, metaphysical shop, bodega, especially Spanish bodega. It's it's flower water. I use it. I'll put a little in my cleansing my floors. Um, but it's Florida water. I can't believe I've brought it. I've been on a million things. We, I've had, I have How some Florida water that? with me now, which I'm going to use to clear you. I would love that. Yeah. I did. I grew up in Florida. I think. I think a lot of people know. That's insane. I, we would literally go to the beach like three, four times a week. Wait, is it actual Florida state water, or is it no. like Florida, like Latin for flower, kind of Florida? They never told me exactly, but I think it has to do with flower more. It doesn't say like okay. there's a picture of the state. Of, <laughs> I don't know. They never. I thought you were like, like they go to Cocoa Beach. They go, like, all Every the time. weekend they bring a bucket. <laughs> Every no. time there's a hurricane, all the houses just get blown. <laughs> <laughs> just the water just comes ripping through. That's why it rains in the middle of the day. They're just keeping Florida holy. It, it's it's kind of like a cheap perfume. How many people here it's know about like Florida water? Perfume. How many people here know about Florida water? Yeah, you, you guys know. You guys do this, yeah. So it's not actually Florida water. It's Florida water. It's not Florida water? What does that mean? It's so it's Florida. not Florida water, but it's, it's Florida, Florida water. water. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. I was about to say, if, if it was actual Florida water that was like helping be pure and holy, I don't understand why it's every news article is Florida man robs a bank in a bunny suit. <laughs> like, it'd be like, yo, that water is not working very well. <laughs> yeah, they, they test the Florida water. It's like, what's in it? It's like, well, it's a mixture of Red Bull and pee. <laughs> <laughs> With a dab of THC. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Florida. What other state would have the worst holy water? It's Mississippi old, water? Mississippi. It, I, yeah, I don't know. Uh, what state but it's the would only it? water that has this name is Florida. I've never heard of Connecticut water or California water. That's it's right. Florida water. What about like Kentucky water? Tread carefully. You're very close to that border right now. So next question. <laughs> <laughs> so we have, am I reading the first story? Yeah. Okay. So here is uh, the very, very first one. In the house I grew up in, I would always experience sleep paralysis every night in my room as a child and teenager. And it would feel as if something was on top of me. My eyes would be open. I would be awake trying to scream and nothing would come out. I would have nightmares and I would always feel things and see things from the corner of my eyes and just always had a bad feeling. But one time as a teenager, I was in my room. I stepped out for a couple minutes and when I returned, Everything I had on my dresser was thrown across the room and on my bed. Nobody could have gone in there. It was a small house, so we would have seen if anybody went into that area. So after that happened, my mom got connected to the priest of our church at the time and had him bless the house. Well, when he came, he also had two ladies with him. And they walked the house and checked it out, blessed it, and said there was something darker in there. So we all stood in a circle, holding hands in my living room. The priest, the ladies, my mom, and me. And we just prayed, and they were speaking in tongue. And I had a cat at the time, and the cat was freaking out. The whole house got hot and it seemed like the walls were shaking. It was intense. I don't remember much after that, just that after that happened, I moved everything out of my room into another room in the house and never experienced sleep paralysis again. Hmm. There are quite a few questions I have in mind, yeah. but firstly, I would like to bring up uh, Sherlyn, or Sherlyn, 
Would you, uh, right? Oh, wow, look at that. Hi. Hey, come on. There's a little uh, staircase right over there if you'd like. Hello? Yeah, there okay. we go. You okay? <laughs> no, I'm nervous. I'm <laughs> shaking. Well, don't be nervous. Free. You're all My good. heart's racing a thousand miles per hour right now. Why? Is it because you're going to talk about the story or is it because we're in front of... Everything. Everything. Mm -hmm. Okay, everyone close your eyes. From the very no. beginning. <laughs> <laughs> how, how can we make you feel a little bit more comfortable right now? I'll get over it eventually. Okay. All right. Sure. That's all right. Just I like enjoy that. it. Yeah. <laughs> how long ago would you say this was? It started, I think, around seven or eight years old. And that's when I would get the sleep paralysis. And then um, I think I was 14, maybe, when the priest came. Like 14, 15, when the priest came, cleansed it and everything. Okay. So 15 years yeah, ago? Yeah, Okay. Cool. So about no, 15 years ago. 17. Okay. I'm 27. <laughs> okay. And then I, I got I got to ask about the priest and the ladies that came with. Like, was this like a priest at your local church, parish? Um, I was raised Catholic. Yeah. Okay. And so um, I'm Christian now, but um, yeah, it was a Catholic priest. Okay. Because when, when, I, when I read this, the way I interpreted it mm -hmm. as uh, is that the priest showed up with these two ladies mm -hmm. and it's feels as though they did something they shouldn't have. Because I've never heard of a, I could be incorrect here, but I've never heard of a priest in either denomination that speaks in tongues. I don't know what was going on. I just know that they came to bless. It was after my dad passed away. And so they came in and cleansed the house. They put oil on every single door. This is what my mom told me, that they put oil on every single door, every cabinet, like everything, because they said that ghosts like to hide in dark places. And so, um, and then they just said there was something darker there. And so that's when we started praying in the living room. Have you heard anything like this? Um, we all, I've got a bunch of things, observations of what and why. And yeah, I don't know that Catholics do tongues either. That's kind of a Pentecostal thing. That's a you know, evangelical thing. Um, but who knows? Maybe mm -hmm. it was an evangelical priest or whatever you can, or they were or they were just possessed by the spirit doesn't have to be bad <laughs> scary. not all spirits that possess you are bad that is what evangelicals or Pentecostals do they're possessed by the mm -hmm. Holy Spirit and so it doesn't have to be a bad thing um, you're really gifted we even I talked am. about that she's really gifted and so it starts young and spirits mm -hmm. are going to feel it and especially when you hit that puberty age it's going to be extra strong things that happen that's why poltergeist activity is almost always with young teens young teens because your life force is so big I always say when I'm doing work if I'm because I work a lot with young teens like awesomeness TV folks uh, different younger YouTubers yeah. um, and everything is so heightened because your life force. And mm -hmm. so there's somebody gifted like that. Um, but one thing that a lot of people don't know about um, sleep paralysis, because yes, it could be something sitting on you. And yes, there's part of it, it is a real medical condition that just real is a real medical condition. But the other thing about it, if you get sleep paralysis and all you paranormal types out there, that is the best way to enter into astral travel. Corey's going, ah. <laughs> no, it is. If you, okay, say you're frozen and you can't move. It mm -hmm. doesn't feel negative. If it feels negative, go get out, whatever, even if you have to stay with your head. Remember, don't do it with fear and don't want, do it with anger. A negative spirit wants fear or anger. Do it like you're its teacher or its parent. Nope. If it feels negative, but if it doesn't feel negative and you're just frozen and you can't move, energetically roll out of it, like roll to the side. Even if your physical body doesn't roll, but imagine yourself rolling, and that's a really, that's how I train people to go into astral projection. I wish I would have known that because I was always terrified. Yeah. Mm -hmm. can, can I, can I quick, just quickly dabble back on something before we go down that route? Yeah. Did you uh, say for a moment that the priest could have been possessed <laughs> while during the cleansing? N no, I said, <laughs> I did not say that. I thought I you said because part of the reason he could have been speaking in tongues was he might have been possessed at right. that Right, well, he didn't speak but in tongues. The ladies it was the ladies. Do. No, what I'm saying is that we look at possession like always a bad thing. Mm -hmm. is, I don't know if there's any Pentecostals. I study religion. This is what I do. I have a school. I have, um, evangelicals, when you bring down the Holy Spirit, when you, with holy rollers, same thing, speaking in tongues. They take on that spirit. It's a positive spirit. It's a good spirit, you know, most of the time. Um, they just like the experience of it. 
of what it is. And okay. it is a possession. It's a possession of God, it's a possession of spirit. Mm. But no, I did not say that the, the priest was possessed. Yeah, okay. I thought, I thought you just mentioned like that was an option. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Because hmm. I used to have sleep paralysis mm -hmm. growing up, like probably like three, four times a week for like five years straight. Yeah, and you me. astral traveled, right? Yes, once at once I learned about it, and I, I only did it two times, maybe three times at most, because the last time that I did it, I left my house, and that's when when I went outside my house, the entire neighborhood was just a bright white light. So I started walking down, and then I see down by a stop sign stop sign at the end of the street was just, it, it was pretty much like the shadow man that I remember. I remember it being the shadow man. And I just remember running back to my house. And as soon as I opened my door, I literally just fast forwarded, like flew for, like through the house, went back into my body and then immediately woke up. Why do you think sleep paralysis happens spiritually or paranormal wise? Is it because we're not getting enough sleep? Is it because we're opening up to something? Is it like spirits in the house or in the area like forcing us to have sleep paralysis? Again, I think there's, it's three legitimate reason. One is just a medical condition, nothing to do with spirits. It's like nerve or, you know, I'm not a doctor. One is, yes, is something dark sitting on you. And, and two is, yes, I think maybe it is just like we have nerve stuff, we have psychic stuff more and more. It is a connection to you. Like you're really gifted too. So you're going to experience it. So did anything, did you do anything paranormal before you started getting sleep paralysis? Not me, but my brother was at the time. In the house. He used to mess with black magic and stuff like that in the house. Really? Yeah. And I think till this day, from what I've heard from my mom that he's told her, he still has something following him. Really? Uh-huh. So you think the dark energy, energy that him. was in the house was from him? Yeah, for sure. That's what we all think. Florida water. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I thought about a hurricane. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> okay, did, did you ever get into what kind of black magic your brother was doing? No. He never told you. Did you ever walk in on him? He gave me like a witchcraft book once, which I kind of read, but I didn't know anything about it. So I kind of just didn't even bother with it. I didn't want to get into that. Okay. Well, I, 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 just let me say, witchcraft book does not mean negative necessarily. Yeah, I don't think <laughs> at it all. Was. You know, most witchcraft books mm -hmm. are super positive and mm -hmm. not negative at all. Yeah, just speaking as an author mm -hmm. of one. Yeah. <laughs> what about black magic? Because I like my That's different. Is, most people view black magic as entirely negative, but like I've met people and I've encountered people where they use black magic for positive reasons. So there is a darkness that they need, but they use it for beneficial purposes. So do you view black magic as always negative or can it be used in the right way? Me personally, I, I choose not to, and it's not heaven or hell, good or bad, but I think you create the world you live in. Like if you're using black magic, say you're using it to control someone, that means you've created and you live in a world where you can be controlled. Mm -hmm. So it's, that's like the kickback, the car, whether you want to call it karma or the read by three or you know, cause and effect, action and reaction using science terms. So, but one of my best friends in the world works really, really dark. I don't judge her by it. I just think that I get more effect with my good magic and I'm a happier person than her. But mm. it's her choice, mm -hmm. and she uses, there is energy, and energy is energy is energy, light and dark. Witchcraft is witchcraft, practice is practice. You choose if it's good or bad or, you know, I, I use, I don't use white, it's, yeah. yeah. It, but you have to live in the world you create. Mm -hmm. Sure. I don't think he does any of that anymore, but I think just from everything he's done in the past, it's still affecting him to this day. And how many years for him now? Same thing, 15, he's 16 years? He's 10 years? years older than me. He's 37. He, tell him he and can. And he's a teenager. Let, he can get rid of it. He everything can. can get rid of everything. I've never seen anything. Unless he has a severe addiction problem mm -hmm. or a severe mental imbalance, which I don't think he mm -hmm. does. That's the people that you, you give up control. Other than that, he's allowed something to control him. Yeah. Did he get good grades? No, he... Mm. No. Wasn't that good at using his magic, huh? <laughs> Uh, he's just had very bad luck since a very young age. Do you know where his interest came I it, think it's, from that? I think it runs in our family. I was okay. gonna say, to get like into that, that as a teenager mm -hmm. is like someone in your family or close to you has to bring that into your life. I mean, obviously the internet, but we're talking, we didn't actually, Not the right? dark stuff, but light stuff, yes. Yeah. Mm. Like we have that sixth sense. 
Yeah, cause I mean, actually thinking about it, like if you turn the tables back on when it was, like there, mm-hmm. we weren't, we're not talking about the time with Google and YouTube. Like mm-hmm. that's something you had to physically have sought out. I think when it came to the darker stuff, uh, it was the crowd that he was hanging out with at the time. Oh, got it. He was one of those angry goth high school kids. <laughs> yeah. So to go back to the story, you said that the house was shaking. Is That's that right? what it felt like. Like it like just got earthquake? really hot and it felt like it was just vibrating probably from all the energy in the air. Like just talking to her earlier, I was vibrating. Hmm. I'm vibrating right now. Yeah. Nerves. But did it, did it <laughs> feel like an earthquake was happening? Uh, in a way. Did everyone feel it? I don't know. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, that's interesting. I always think about that. Like, they do the cleansing, and like, where where do, where does it where does it go? Like, they they do the cleansing, and they put oil on all the door frames, and they do everything else, and then let's say it leaves the house. But where where does it go? Does it just shoot up into the air and just find the next house that it wants? Like, <laughs> what what is it actually dissipating? Is it just instant? Like, is it gone? Well, that what's funny funny to me about Catholics are the Again, no judgments because every path is a right path in my little world. But they do use more. I beseech thee, say, mm-hmm. get rid of. And they use more violence and anger to. Mm-hmm. I don't know what they do with it. I have a gentler way, my more elementally based pagan. I'll send it outside to a tree, to the ground, to transmute. Just like trees turn carbon carbon monoxide into oxygen, nature does that. That's why when I, if we call the things, I call in the east winds and the, the power of earth. We are sitting on this big ball planet and it has everything we need as far as protection and clarity and passion and everything else. So when I clear it, I will just to get out. You can't come here, go back to where you came. But I usually will try to send it out to get just transmuted up into you know, cleaned by a tree kind of in a weird sense. Hmm. Yeah, that's, that's always kind of a good thought of like, where yeah. does it go? You know, does it just shoot into the sky? And Your neighbors. No. Yeah. <laughs> just go find a pigeon and then that's why pigeons just shit on people. You know what I mean? Like it's just, that's what's happening. Just <laughs> <laughs> all these seagulls just taking you out. Yeah. Are you, how you feel now? You feel better. better. You feel better? A lot better. Okay. Have yeah. you told a lot of people about this story? Uh, no, not really. <laughs> what made you want to tell us, I guess? I wanted to tell you guys at Pythian, mm. but I just didn't get the chance to. Okay. So I just wrote it in. All right. Well, thanks. Thanks for yeah. sharing. And Seriously. Yeah, mm-hmm. Appreciate Thank it. You. Sincerely. Round of applause, please. <laughs> Thank you. I'll, I'll grab the mic from you. You are story number two, sir. Yes. Yes. The year was 14. Fi- <laughs> no. He did it. He did it for like the first five shows on tour. We had a rule that was like, no one can understand you. <laughs> and if anyone were to tune into the podcast that doesn't know that voice, they're like, what <laughs> drugs are they on? All right, I'll read it normally, okay? I mean, you can read it, just not that voice. Yeah. <laughs> or to preface this story. I'm kidding. All right. To preface this story, my parents are divorced, and each week, I switched living situations. So this particular week, I was staying with my mom and something that day had me unsettled. This was probably on a school break or summer around 2010. I had asked my mom that evening if I could go stay the night at my dad's house. She kept asking me why and what was wrong with me. And I honestly couldn't give her an answer. All I knew is that something didn't feel right. She drove me out to my dad's house that night, and that was that. Before I went to bed, I was sitting on the floor, folding clothes, and something caught my eye. I looked in my doorway to my left and seen a gray-colored shadow figure. Once I seen it, it quickly moved right out of the doorway. It was an outline of a man's body I know that for sure it honestly didn't freak me out too bad. I thought maybe my eyes had just played tricks on me since it was getting late, so I decided to just go to bed. In the morning, my dad and stepmom came into my room and quickly woke me up. They said, Lori, please, when we tell you this, don't freak out. Just know everyone is okay. They explained to me that in the middle of the night, 
a man had broke into my mom's house through the back door. My mom had thankfully been awake and hit him over the head with the vacuum. (laughs) Oh, go mom. All right. We laugh about that part now. I bet. Yo, that's super mom. Could you imagine? He's like, he gets hit in the head. He was like, Hoover, damn. (laughs) He had made it through the laundry room, kitchen, then the dining room when my mom found him. My sister had actually slept on the couch that night and thankfully had not seen him, nor had he made it to the living room at that point. Now, I don't know how I knew something was off and continued to have the unsettled feeling. Finally, seeing the warning sign, I guess you could say, of the shadow figure, that's when I knew. Uh, Lori, Lori, could you please come up here? How you doing? Good, how are you guys? Good. Good. Thank you, first off, for submitting your story. Appreciate Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Okay, can you, can you clarify, because I, I, I read the story earlier, and I just want to make sure. Yeah. The, you were in a different house than what was broken into. Is that correct? Correct. Okay, cool. Yes. Uh, originally, when we read it, we were like, did you see it? So you saw something in your house that actually was an actuality in a different house, right? Like, you basically had a premonition, a warning. Right, so I okay. felt something off that day, and I told my mom, like, I need to go to my dad's house. Like, something isn't right. So when I went to my dad's house, a different house, a different house, then that's when I seen the shadow figure to my left and it like disappeared. Different house. Do you know what time it happened at? Like, do you know if it, like you saw the shadow figure at the exact same time that it was happening at the other house? Or do you think that that was a warning that that was about to happen? I don't know if I can like, speak to the exact timing Mm -hmm. maybe before i all i know is it was in the middle of the night because i wasn't there yeah but reality it could have been i just don't know okay what i you were not overly scared when you saw the shadow figure though no what i'm thinking is she didn't what she wasn't seeing a view of some real human breaking into her mom's house that might have been one of your guides or something that was the guy who warned you at your house um stay at your dad stay at your dad stay at your dad's and then he went over and watched you okay she's here she's safe everybody's gonna be okay because mom's awake and sister's on the couch and maybe you wouldn't have been so lucky i see him more like a guardian angel or or guide i've never thought about it like that wow can you describe your mother to me (laughs) <laughs> uh, well, she's a little taller than me. Looks about the exact same. Okay. And her go-to weapon is a vacuum. <laughs> I guess that was the closest object. Okay, did she knock him out? I think so. I, was he arrested? Like, Yes, he was arrested. Oh my God, I want to see the mugshot so bad. <laughs> I just know. like the little lines in his face from the stretchy hose. <laughs> right. just, like, yeah, just, it's yeah. still stuck in his cheek. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I guess the guy had actually been drunk and came through like the laundry door and I don't know exactly like came through the wait the laundry door what's what is like the, the back door to the laundry room oh oh okay like, okay like, yeah. like a doggy door yeah that's what I that's what I thought you meant I'm like no, damn this no, drunk no. guy is nimble no, just... yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah wow is this is this like a, a common thing okay one nothing bad happened right no, before we continue no. making jokes about this no nothing okay, bad cool. happened okay <laughs> nothing bad happened did did he ever like did you ever know him did he go to the bar was there like a story around it was just like right. hey you wouldn't believe what happened to me last night <laughs> so actually before we had moved in the house he had actually lived there prior to oh so i guess he was drunk coming home thinking he still lived there oh, oh. so but we okay. had no clue. It, if that's the case, it sounds like you have a really overprotective guardian angel. You just had a drunk guy, and he's like, I got to protect him, keep him safe. Yeah. It I, was like a, me- like, you know, it was a harmless thing that was about to happen, yeah, I guess. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if he had bad intentions, though. I don't know. Okay. I have no idea. I don't even know if he had a home at the time. Uh, I don't know. Mm. Just think if he was just drunk and thought he was going home, the yeah. shock when there's some strange woman <laughs> yeah. hitting him with a vacuum cleaner. Yeah. That's what? true. Did he have the key? Did he have the key to get in? I, I don't know. I don't I, know. I've my... heard stories of that where like people come back to their old house right. just kind of drunk, but they still have the key and the locks weren't changed. To my knowledge, the locks were changed. I mean, 
Okay, was he still there when the cops showed up to arrest him? Do you know? I wasn't there. Oh, I was at man. my dad's. Oh, we man. don't even care about the paranormal part anymore. We just, we just want to know about a dude who got knocked out by your mom with you the vacuum. Imagine the cops come in. He's like laying on the ground. He's like, I came home and this strange lady just He's beat not- me up with a vacuum in my house. <laughs> and then she swiffered my face. <laughs> she spit on it and swiffered it. And then she made me do the dishes and yelled at me. <laughs> Wow. Yeah. So, so you think it was the guardian angel? I, I really do. I think it was like a spirit guide or guardian angel, just like stay at your dad's, stay at your dad's, and then just kind of looked over you and said, "Okay, she's safe. She's here. That guy's coming in anyway." Yeah. Yeah. I've never thought about it like that before. Because you would have felt you the ominous feeling was at your mom's house, not at your dad's house, Correct. and you knew to go there. So he sounds like a good thing. Right. Have you had any other instances where maybe you were given warnings that maybe now that that's been brought up? kind of links together? I don't know if I've had warnings per se. I've had like different things happen. Like I've like heard people's voices, like my granny that has passed away. Like I've heard her voice, like I'm a nurse and like I've had like a patient call in. I think I left that on like the thing that I sent in and like it sounded exactly like her and I was like, whoa, wait a minute. And then never ever heard that patient ever again. And then like, I actually used to work in a prison and I would have things like fall off, like medications fall off. And I'm like, can you please stop? And it would stop. Mm. Like, I've just had like odd things happen to me. I've never had any more warnings per se. Whenever I hear about like those little things, like knocking up medicine jars, to me, it's like, it's like, uh, it just, I always visualize it. as like the little kid that's like, mom, mommy, mom, <laughs> yeah. mom. And then you just snap and you're like, shut up, Timmy. Like, <laughs> like all, he was like, all I want is a snack. Like he's just trying to get your attention. Right. I always wonder like when those little things are happening, is it malicious? Like, you know, is it a malicious act or is it just like, Hey, I don't, I can't get into your head. I can't like speak to you verbally. So let me just try and get your attention however I can. And that's what I always think about when I hear these little acts is like, is it someone innocent just trying to be like, hi, this is the only way I can communicate to you. Mm-hmm. Is, that, is that like, is that a, an option? Is like why Com- when we see things like that? Completely. Yeah. And it is a, again, activity created or not to open a whole other ball of worms, the fairy realm, whether you believe they're real little fairy Tinkerbell things or not, the energetics of fairies. I have them because they bring you music and laughter and all sorts of great things into your life. I have a big old fairy garden, but if they get too rambunctious, they start hiding your earrings and your shiny things and your keys, but they will give them back if you bribe them. Give them a little honey, give them a little cream, give them a little whiskey, depending on the fairy, and all of a sudden your keys are right there again. Who has experienced fairy fairy stealing? Yeah, it's a, it's a common thing in the whole metaphysical world. They're great mm. things, but it's kind of like kids, having too many kids. So there's lots of good things that can happen, just either, like you said, to get your attention or because it's an elemental. Okay, you have a fairy garden? Because when I hear fairy garden, it sounds like a bar in West Hollywood. <laughs> but so you, what, what, is, what, is a, <laughs> what is a fairy garden? Like I've, I've ne- I've genuinely asking, I've never heard of this before at all. Now you will. You'll see it all over. I literally have, you invite the fairies. Corey's still into- laughing right now. He really wants to go to Fairy Garden in WeHo. <laughs> I, I've been there. It's a great place. Sunday night. No, <laughs> um, no it's, it's you invite them. Again, it's an energy. Energy. <laughs> I have. Laughing. Are you me? Sorry, I'm sorry. Everybody, you, every, how many of you collect little fairies and stuff? You have them around. That calls in the energy. I have a little door on one of my hundred-year-old palm trees. It's a fairy door. They're made by people energetically charged. <laughs> all right. Fa- We're fa- not laughing at you, by the way. I know, no, no, you, you, and you can laugh at me. No, fairies live at the edge. Edge of day, edge of night, edge of the path, edge of the garden. So you're going to see them at sunrise, sunset. You're going to see them in the corner of your eyes, just like ghosts, everything other realm. You're going to see in your peripheral vision versus your straight vision. That was a nice pun at the end there. I know. <laughs> so when I when I have my keys go missing, when I have little stuff go missing, is that it's spirits or is it always... Well, that depends on when, if, if it is something like an elemental or fairy takes it, if, if, you, if you find them right where you left them, and you'd look there a million times, it's probably something like supernatural. If you, if, when the fairies, like, I will br- gladly bribe them. It's I'll give you a b- bowl of glitter, I'll give you some honey. Um, then you, they show up either exactly where you left them and you've looked a million times and they weren't there, or they'll put them somewhere you would absolutely never put them. Like, I did not leave you in my sock drawer, in my socks. Mm. Something like that kind of shows it's them. 
Have you, had you ever heard of fairies before, like in this sense? Not in this okay, sense. Okay, cool. No, I'm just making sure. Like, I've, li- like, legit- I've known you for a few years, and I've never heard this before, so I'm like just actually interested in yeah, it. Yeah, I know people who have a whole like, belief system on it. It's a, uh, there's this beautiful man, Orion Fox, who's got a whole, his whole practice is fairy realm built on a lot of in Ireland, they're really afraid of them, though. I know you guys, they, they see fairies really dark. I went to a fairy, a fairy farm in Ireland on my, oh my recent God, there's trip. A, there's an ecosystem around <laughs> these now. Okay. <laughs> there is. Um, no, and, if, and he was like this good old Irish farmer, and he had sheep, a lot of sheep, sheep and cows and pigs and horses and all the things you have. And, we, and you have to be invited into a fairy, a fairy fort. And even the city, if you run by the city, they will, if there's a road going through, they will not put a road through a fairy fort, a fairy garden that will go around it. Just like we would do, say, if it's a Native American, or we should do, if it is. But we were invited. We had to give little gifts for the fairies. And then we went to this fairy tree, and it had like ribbons and things and shiny things. And it was literally like a psychic experience going under this fairy tree it was like and no drugs it was just like oh this is great and then the thing is I walked out of the fairy tree and I was again beautiful green lush and I'm standing there and I looked over at the fairy tree about but where that light is and there was 20 people standing there and I'm like oh it's so pretty and I look left of me there was this beautiful white stallion for real and I look right at me there was this beautiful black and white cow I'm like I'm the luckiest girl in the world horse, cow, people. I closed my eyes, I opened my eyes, and the people were gone, and the horse was on my right, and the cow was on my left. I'm like, but the fairies had turned me around. It was, literally, they picked me up and turned me 180 degrees without me noting it. I didn't move my feet, I didn't do anything. They just flipped me 180. That's a super fairy thing to do. What? So what kind of vacuum did your mom hit him with? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> that whole time I'm just thinking about like when he asked you to go into the fairy fort they, do you want to come into the fairy fort yes he was he looked like a he, he everything you would want him to look like he looked like oh that's like, amazing right out of central casting that, he was that beautiful. honestly sounds like a yesterday video we visited the place where they're afraid of fairies <laughs> that 24 hours of the village yeah. afraid of fairies so was yeah. it a Dyson <laughs> I don't think so. I think so. I don't so know. So before, before that night that you saw the shadow figure and all that happened, right. did you ever do anything paranormal to open yourself up? Never. Um, did I you mean, watch ghost shows? Occasionally, my dad would, we would like watch like a haunted movie every now and again. But like, I wasn't allowed to read or watch Harry Potter because it was witchcraft. Like, that's how I was raised. I was raised uh, Southern Baptist. So I was not allowed like any of that. Mm. So after that night and you explaining mm-hmm. about the shadow figure that you saw, how did they react to that? I think my mom was like, why didn't you call me and tell me? Like, why didn't you give me the warning? Ooh. I'm like, I didn't yeah. know. Yeah, you wouldn't put that together. No, I really had no idea. And I honestly didn't think like anyone would believe me because I really was like, I think my mind's playing tricks on me because it was getting late. I didn't know. Yeah. Yeah, I'd so it's your fault. Yeah, <laughs> I guess it was my fault. Do you think when he got hit with the vacuum, he was like, oh, this sucks? <laughs> yeah, literally. Yes. <laughs> That's good. That's a good That's one. That's a dad joke for your mom. Let her know. I will let her know. <laughs> well, I didn't think a story about a mother hitting uh, someone with vacuums. It was a drunk guy who used to live in the house, and we talked about fairies, and man, that was a fun roller coaster. Yeah, that was yes, fun. Yes, absolutely. Thank <laughs> you. I really felt like I went on a ride at Disney. That was <laughs> <Yeah>. delightful. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for sharing right. your story. Thank I appreciate you. it. A thank round you. of applause, please. Um, all right, so I'm going, I'm going to preface this story by saying we are always looking for stories that we have never heard before or anything like this. Um, and this is a story that truly, after I've been doing this for five years and have been doing this tour for 20 different something nights, that none of us had ever heard it before. Um, so we, not that we've never heard of this before, we've never heard of something at this nature before, at this level. Um, so we want to read the story, and then we would love to hear from the person who wrote it to learn a little bit more about uh, this evening, or I guess a few evenings, I do believe. This is how the story that is written begins. It is a page and a half. I will read it swiftly. This was about mid to late January of this year. I had been watching your guys' video forever and inspired me to ghost hunt as well. 
So I got some dowsing rods and started with my friend and video slash audio recorder of all of our investigations. Little background. My church owns another building for Sunday school classes in the youth group. This building was built in the 1800s and was owned by the Freemasons before my church. The building was a Masonic temple for the Freemasons. So I thought that this is the best place to start. I have easy access to it and I'm there once a week to do whatever. Long story shortened down. In January, me and my friends, Ava and Mia, and then in parentheses it says, these are not their real names for their privacy, figured out that a teen girl was murdered and unfortunately sexually assaulted by two older men. In February, me and one of my friends figure out exactly what they did to the girl. We also gain a ghost hunting buddy, Ava's boyfriend, Paul, again, not his real name. In March, we start to venture out more into the building and moving. This, there is a ballroom in that building and we put on ballroom music and danced and we had two spirits dancing with us. I also learned that Ava, Paul, and Mia are more psychically inclined than me. They can see and feel a lot more. I can feel when there is something looking at me or is there. That's where I was written, sorry. As me and Mia are going around the building, she sees a party going on in the ballroom and men in suits in the balcony watching the party go on. She also sees two maids by the kitchen. And as we get to the big staircase, she sees a seven foot tall shadow figure. And she sees a little boy running from the ballroom to a parlor that smelled like alcohol to her. A week later, me, Paul and Ava go around the building and Ben sees the same seven foot shadow figure in the same spot, but looking at us. And when I tried to look where they were saying it was, it would disappear for them. And when I wasn't looking at, at it, it came closer to us. Paul said that the shadow wanted him to go up on the second floor into a certain room and I couldn't go. Ava was taking care of her car that day and said we could keep investigating. We went up to the second floor anyway and looked into the certain room and the shadow figure followed us up there. He saw five more shadowy figures with suits and ties. We then figured out that they were the Freemasons, one in each corner of the room and one in the middle with a knife. Great. He stupidly went into the room and before I could step in, he stopped me and said, they don't want you in here and that the shadow figure from downstairs was glaring at me to not go inside. So the next thing I did was walk in the room. As soon as I did, they were all glaring at me. The next day, I showed Paul a drawing I did when trying to draw what Jack the Ripper would look like because he was in a book I was reading. And I was looking off into space and saw a flash of a man with a knife. And when I showed Paul, he immediately said, yeah, that's what they look like. Another week later, we are still moving around. Mia sees a little girl in the basement, which belongs to the youth group. Another week later, I take Ava and Paul to a room called the bridal room, which has two vortexes mirrors facing each other, and is by a spiral staircase. When it was just me and Mia that day, she sat in between a vortex as we asked questions. The bride that we talked to told us a Freemason practice that was done there. In the last week of March, me, Mia, and Ava hang out at my house and decide to see if I have spirits in my room because when you walked in, it felt heavy that day. We figured out that the little girl that Mia saw and had followed up one of us to my house. We also made our own sphere box for the Essie's method. We played white noise into noise canceling headphones and closed our eyes or had a blindfold on. As we go along, we get to the brilliant idea to have two people under and one person asking questions. Me and Mia go under and I keep saying, like Mia, Mia says you're next and things like that. But the crazy thing is once Ava gets us out, we ask her what's going on cause she's scared and we don't remember what happened. She videoed the whole thing and showed us. Mia responded to all of her questions after going under with her head tilted down and eyes open. About 20 minutes later, we do another session with Mia under and she moves a ton after going under and told us that she couldn't remember anything and that she wasn't doing that. Later at night, Ava FaceTimes Paul and Paul is not acting like Paul and Paul and Mia, that's a lot of names, and is not acting like Paul and Paul and Mia are acting really strange and we connect that there was a little girl and a little boy at the building. Once they left the next day, my room was no longer heavy and no spirits that I could and still can't find. 
From that point forward, we always prayed before and after an investigation and got everyone cross necklaces. My friends also figured out that whenever we get together to pray and I say the prayer and the protection prayer, they, they work and I don't get any attachments. So they say I have a protection gift. From April till now, we were not given the opportunities to do ghost investigations, but I still went there to make sure that they are still there and they are. And about two weeks ago, Mia sent me a picture of herself working in the dark at her home with a spirit behind her. I showed the picture to Ava and she saw many more spirits behind her. That is the story so far. So far? So far. <laughs> a heavily, heavily complex story where a group of friends encountered more spirits and shadow figures than we have seen in ever a combined decade doing this. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we'd like to, to bring this person up on stage and this is Cadence. Cadence, could you join us? Give her a hand. This stairs on the other side and I'll under the mic. Okay, <laughs> question mainly. Yes. Why do your friends want their privacy hidden? Why can't they use their real names? I did not ask them if they wanted their privacy. I thought it would be just be courteous to use different names. And after I told them, hey, I'm going here, I might be talking about you. They're like, why didn't you say our names? We want to be known as these people. I was like, well, I was trying to respect your privacy because I know you guys like privacy. So what are their names? Sarah is Ava, Ben is Paul, and Leilani is Mia. Have you heard anything like this before? Because I've, I've never, I mean, we've, I think just a few nights ago, the first time ever I saw like a shadow figure. And I say that because two other people saw it with me and we all had the exact same reaction and we all chased it down. That's the first time I've ever shared that experience with other people. In, in all the years prior, I've maybe seen things, but never that I can confirm that two other people I had only met that day had seen it at the exact same moment. So have you, have you encountered something like this? Well, to that extent, n no. I mean, you guys have such detail, detail, detail. When you were first talking, when you're first reading it, it's like, it, before you got to the Masons part, it's like, they just watched The Shining. <laughs> Wait, the hotels <laughs> and the ball, everything going on. But, um, but this, that detail was very, very deep. And not saying it didn't happen, but sometimes we start creating, not creating stories, but even like I got the message from the little girl about Corey and it was just very clear to me um, that she was looking for her daddy. She really hadn't seen her daddy um, and that was given to me by spirit. But just in that much detail, a thing speaking for you though is that you got, you're young, right? You're very mm -hmm. young. Yes. And that you thing, again, is very, very gifted before we get too jaded, before we get to everything else. So, but, but again, just to get that exact many, and if it was a shadow figure, how do you see suits with a shadow figure? But again, I think you have a great group of friends. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it was your friends that saw that, right? Yeah. Not yes. you? Yeah. Yes, I couldn't see anything. They would always say, oh, hey, there's somebody over there just letting you know, because I've never seen anything. I try to see things. I've tried opening it. I can't see anything. They're like, hey, there's actually people there. I like, okay, yeah, there's something here, but I can't see it. Is it is it more of their they can actually see it? Yeah. Or is it in their mind they can picture it? They can it? actually see it when they're describing the suits. He's looking at it the entire time and describing that, oh, there's a tie, there's a suit a suit jacket, there's some pants. This is a suit. He's looking at it the entire time. I know he's not lying because I've tested him many, many different times. Yeah, that's and it was so not, wild. Again, and that's the different clairs. You don't always see, and sometimes you, there's that clairaudience versus clairvoyance versus clairsentience. Sometimes you see, you know, with your outside eyes. Sometimes you see inside your head. There's the movie. Sometimes you just know that somebody's standing behind you, whether you see it or not. Sometimes you feel. Sometimes you hear. Sometimes you taste. It's all the different senses are all equally. It's just this would create such a, a, a complete story. Nobody's saying you're lying or anything. <laughs> like that it's just like wow that would be like the 48 best mediums in the world all be put together but then again you are young but you know trust you just because you don't think you see doesn't mean you're not going to sense things like along the way you don't always have to see that's not one of the strongest clairvoyance i mean clairs anyway does your friends practice anything do you know why they're so open i don't know why they're so open but they do have a lot more traumatic childhoods than I do. 
almost all of their parents are divorced, remarried, have some form of abuse in their lives. And I think that's what has had them more gifted than I do because I haven't had that happen to me at all. Um, that's my best guess. So you don't know if they're, like, for example, if they're uh, like their brother or their <laughs> friend, or are they, are they practicing anything? You mm. know, are they doing black magic? Like, are, are they doing anything on the side, or are they just walking into locations and saying, like, immediately having... Like, this would... Yeah. Just for reference, like, we, we have learned quite a bit about Lorraine Warren, yeah. right? Known as one of the best, probably the most famous medium in the world and like even she didn't have abilities like that and if your friends have these kinds of abilities I'm very curious to know whether or not they have practiced for years to enhance that or if you have some astronomically gifted <laughs> friends that should immediately be put to like on, a more grandiose test on television yeah. Yeah, exa exactly yeah. you know what I mean if they have that ability then like these are people that should be brought to other locations and that's, that's an extreme gift. And yeah. we did work with someone named Kendall in mm -hmm. one of our first videos ever, and I believe she was nine years old, yep. and she was yep. medium, and she was able to walk through rooms, and she could picture people and see them. Yeah. Um, so I don't know if they were similar, if they were started at nine, and now here yeah. they are at 15, 16, I don't know how old they are. Well, Sarah has told me she has seen multiple shadows, multiple ghosts. She can see things. She told me right off the bat, hey, just letting you know, I can see things if you want me to tell you that there's something here. Um, my friend Leilani, she's always lived in a haunted house. She can't really move away from it. Ben, he and one of his cousins did play with a Ouija board in a barn on top of some battlegrounds. So I think that's where it started for him. And he didn't close it unfortunately, so we think there's still something there and we want to figure out what it is. And when we're older, we hopefully we can follow your guys' footsteps and share this information with other people. And you can. And just teach them, let them know that they can have an on-off switch and a dimmer switch. And me, since I saw things since I was a kid, again, maybe not that detail, but I talked to spirits since I was little. Learn to turn it off so you can go to school and go everything else and be normal and go to the grocery store and not be talking to dead people in the produce department. And it, <laughs> really, I don't want to be Long Island medium. Your mother wants to talk to you. Um, have a, have t Turn it off and then turn it on. It makes the on that much stronger. It makes the difference between here and there. And then you get fancy, you get a little dimmer switch in the middle. But, you know, starting out at that youth. So it sounds just like, not black magic, sounds like they're good Christian kids who work a lot at their church. And they're in this place that's heavy and they create. Yeah. Have you guys ever brought tools like, like REM pods? We are high school kids. We do not have that kind of money. I recently just bought some cat balls. So I'm hoping that'll help with the investigation instead of just relying on psychic gifts and dowsing rods. Yeah. Cause I think you can, you can get REM pods for like 50 bucks, right? You can get some decent ones. Yeah, Amazon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, everyone thinks things are way more expensive than they are. You can buy most tools now. Pretty, pretty cheap. Yeah, but I think it'd Great. be really cool if you guys would either go back or go to a new location and then set up REM pods and obviously more cat balls and maybe some other stuff, K2s, it, right where your friends are saying that they're standing. And then you can go ahead and have the conversations with, you know, the shadows that they're seeing. And that'll really confirm it for sure. Okay. Give me an honest answer. Are you jealous? A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I do want to be able to see these things, and I'm the only one that can't. I want to see them. I want to see what they look like. Okay, don't try too hard because you'll see yeah. better when you don't. Because trying means you're using too much left logical brain. You have to learn to kind of shut down that left logical organized brain and just let that right brain, that creative, intuitive, spiritual side, this will shut that down. You have to dance between or just to your heart. Don't try, just allow. Don't try, just be. <sighs> Breathe into it. Okay, That's thank it. you. That's it. Easy. <laughs> yeah, I, th I think Corey, Corey's right. I mean, if you already have the video equipment, if you can, if you can pair that up, like what they're able to see, and it correlates to, you know, a neutral, like electronic-based paranormal device, and they start lining up, you guys have something that Huge. doesn't exist right now. Y'all got a TV show. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> y'all just. Knocked our YouTube channel off the charts. Off the charts. <laughs> you take over for... Oh yeah, yeah. And, but their best advice, too, just keep having fun with it. Again, because you're young, you are kids. Make Keep it fun. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, um, yeah, I mean, that's it's, it's wild. 
I'm just thinking about it being like a Disney show. <laughs> like Sonny with a REM pod. <laughs> you know what I mean? Good luck, K2. <laughs> I'm sorry. I've never watched a Disney show ever, so it's fine. I can't help you right now. It's fine. It's okay, fine. It's fine. sorry. Sorry. <laughs> well, thank you for sharing thank the you. story, Welcome. seriously. Yeah, You're thank welcome. you so much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Well, now we will go into the, the Q&A. Uh, again, same form. Questions were submitted. They're all in this vase. We'll pull them at random. Okay. You want to open that first? Yeah. Okay, I'm, open I'm, it. <laughs> should, should I read it? Or should I just yeah. read it? No, wait, should I read it? I don't know. <laughs> what, you know what it says, would, should you? I don't, I don't Ginger, know. Ginger, should I read this out loud? Okay. It says, super duper important serious message for Corey from audience. Do you guys know about this? What the f***? What are y'all plotting? What have y'all should we read plotting? it now or should we? Now. Now. I don't know what this is. We're getting a lot of notes thrown on stage tonight. What? I swear, watch it be like that same Ouija board you signed but in pieces. Aww. <laughs> what is it? Aww. Oh, it's a birthday card from everybody, and they all signed it. Oh. Oh. I thought they didn't know about it. <laughs> they all just lied to you. Oh. Why did you all just lie to him about a birthday present? <laughs> what? No, they said they knew about it. Oh, I thought only like four people said they knew about it. There's a lot more than four signatures. <laughs> Thank you, guys. I'll read that later. I love y'all. Thank you. That's super sweet. Oh, uh, well, I think we have to answer this uh, the same way. Uh, if we don't, it's going to be awkward. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, let's, so let's answer this one yeah, together. Favorite guest you've had on the Overnight Channel? Patty. <laughs> yeah, Patty. <laughs> Wait. Next I'll, question. I'll, I'll, I'll close my ears. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, it's, 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 yeah. I would, I would honestly say it is a tie. I don't think we have a specific favorite. Yeah. You, you've been wildly uh, beneficial and supportive of us in all of our journeys and willing to live in our stinky <laughs> motorhome um, for a day and come out to do this. So we yeah. genuinely do appreciate everything Seriously. you've done for us over the last Thank few years. Thank you. I, I, it's, it's the best. You, you guys would come too, right? You, I love every second of working with you guys. So thank you. Yeah. Aww. But you could tie it with everybody else. It doesn't. I will, because I have to. Otherwise, you all know witchcraft, and I can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> all right. It says, what drives you to continue exploring the unknown? Ooh. I would mm. love to know your, your answer on this. With me, what drives me is because... I had the gift. I saw things when I was a kid, both spirit world, but also I would be knowing to pick weird plants. Like if if I stuffed rosemary and mint in my mom's purse, it would give her more money. Again, that weird elemental thing I have. And I wanted to know why I knew stuff. I would drive by a church or a temple or a mosque or a synagogue or a park and see the energy of what it was. And I wanted to understand it. So I, I, I just wanted to understand it. So I just became a seeker, started studying everything, religion, philosophy, science, occult science, paranormal metaphysics, just to, 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 to look at it all. That's it. And it's, besides, it's a great world. How boring would life be if it was what you see is what you get? You know, what, what you see is what you get. And more than you see on TV, this is so much more. Yeah. What's your answer, bud? Honestly, right now, what's really pushing me to keep ghost hunting is like, before this tour started, I just kept getting this like gut feeling about this tour having something to do with like God and like leveling up in a way during this tour and like, you know, like either like spreading his name or helping spirits or something. And like, I really feel like that's where I'm going to. Like if I look 15 years into the future, like I now see me as going from haunted location to location, helping spirits cross to the other side. Like it used to just be getting evidence in ghost hunting, but seriously, that's where I see it going is helping spirits that are trapped move on. Beautiful. Yeah. Did you, did you answer? Did you answer? It? No, no one asked me to. We just did. What about you, Elton? <laughs> what 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 continues you? What continues me to what continues me to keep continuing to explore the unknown? Yes. Yes. Um, I think mine comes from perspective of I've always been a horror movie fan. 
Um, it's very interesting to me. And the fact that what you see in horror movies could be a reality, uh, I think, is a very interesting world to explore. Uh, and I enjoy it. And that's why I'm willing to push bounds and see what is possible. Um, but yeah, that's why I continue exploring. Because I'm, I'm very curious to see, like, can you perform 13 exorcisms and credibly, <laughs> incredibly document that everything you see in movies and is, is, a, is a potential reality. Mm. And, but, if, and if it does work and it all goes horribly wrong, guess what? They make a horror movie about me. Right. <laughs> well, it makes sense just like, I mean, because that's that creative process. That's why what she does is beautiful in the creative process. Just like science fiction movies, how much they really predict the future. Mm-hmm. If you look back at those crazy ones of the 50s and 60s and then it all comes to fruition. We think outside, you know, time and, time and space things. Yeah. Well, mine, this is for you guys. How has the overnight channel changed your relationship or your friendship? Oh, re- sorry. Oh. <laughs> I heard relationship. And yeah, I was about yeah. to say, yeah. like, yeah. relationship wise, it's helped it a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but fr- I don't, I don't know. Like, I, I still feel as close as, like, to you now as, like, I did whenever we started it. Like, I've always considered you, like, one of my best friends. And, like, we were already making super fun videos together and like doing stuff that, you know, I'll never forget. Wow. This sounds like we're dating. (laughs) Keep talking. (laughs) I, I, I think if anything, it's, you know, just made us closer and it's just really, uh, (laughs) it's really just helped us explore our love for sponges. (laughs) (laughs) Um, yeah, I mean, we, uh, you know, we, we did a motorhome trip together six years ago. We, we've lived together. We've gone to New Zealand together. We've spent a lot of time together. And we've only had, like, one fight ever, you yeah. know, in six years. And it was, like, pretty, a pretty petty. And it wasn't even really between me and you. Yeah, it wasn't <laughs> yeah. even about us at all. Yeah. Um, so, like, we've never, he and I have never had, like, a fight. Um, you know what I mean? And, like, and for us to go through this tour and literally be sleeping and breathing like the same six square inches of air uh, for an entire month and like still do this and like every show's been great. Yeah. Like every show's been great. Every investigation's been great. Like we're, we're like we love reading these stories together and uh, yeah, I think it's really cool. I think, I think it really, this tour has validated the fact that like I truly think we could do this as long as we want to. Like, I don't think either of us would ever get tired of this. Yeah. Um, or each other. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah. It doesn't matter how many Dybbuk boxes you buy. I'll never get sick of you. Aww. Remember that when you're sleeping in the Dybbuk house. 13. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next question. Next question. I'm going to have you sign every haunted item in that house and then have that <laughs> same girl come back and just be like, <laughs> the first time I walk in the house, it's every Ouija board we've ever signed. That's just one room. <laughs> Oh, God. Uh, okay. This will be final question, I do believe. Have you ever wanted to quit YouTube? Ooh. Yes. <laughs> not, not what, you know, me and you do, though. Like, I've never wanted to quit that. But personal channel-wise, yes. It is very annoying, and it's very discouraging how many years I've put into social media and other people's fan bases that have no idea what they're talking about can just spam me and flood my comments and all my lives and everything just saying stuff and tearing me down and they literally don't know the story or what they're talking about and I can't say anything and that has made me want to quit social media many times yeah, I think there's a, a significant, not to end the show on a, on, a, on a negative note, I think there's a significant darker side to social media that people don't realize. Um, like, you know, people watch the videos, right? And they're like, oh, these videos are super cool and, and they're great. And yes, there's a lot of work that goes into it, money and planning and resources and all, and all that stuff. But there is the, the, the mental health side of being a social media creator, especially if there's anyone in here that's interested in it, is so much more difficult than I think people realize. Like it is so weird to know that your success is measured by the positive response you get from people, which means when you don't get a positive response, you're getting a negative response and you, not the work you did, not the baseball team you managed, not the product you made. It's you, your mind, your soul, your energy created that thing that people don't like. 
And that is such a hard balance to strike. And especially when people like things more, you start adjusting what you do for what people want to see, even though, and then slowly you start doing things more that other people want to see versus less what you want to do. It's a very, I don't know, it's, it, I could go on and on and on about this. Like this is a paranormal, you know, podcast, but the social, the, the, the mental health social element of social media can absolutely just discourage you in a moment um, from creating content. Very similar. We share that exact same thing he's talking about. Um, I've had moments where I literally said, hey, this is the end of TFIL. I'm going to switch to documentaries. Um, I've gone through those moments, and those are very real moments. Like, And when I'm not posting a video, when I'm like, hey, I'm doing my best to edit it, a lot of times it's just because I don't want to edit. Um, I'm just, I'm just like, so it's just, it's so much that goes into it. And then you finally post that video that you like spent 80 hours editing and you have like a thousand people that are like, this sucks. And this, and it's like, I know there's 10,000 more people that are like, this video is amazing, but those thousand people, man, it's just like, it's such a hard filter. I don't know how some people can just like filter through the negativity, but if it wasn't for overnight, I a hundred percent would have moved back to Florida with my family and just straight up stopped doing social media. You know what's weird to hear? I've never heard you say that. You know what's really weird about that? If it weren't for TFIL, and I'm not speak, putting words in his mouth, but I, I feel like I can say confidently about this. If it weren't for the creation of TFIL, Heath would have also moved back to Florida. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he was ready to move back to Florida, and then yep. TFIL was created. Look at you just saving us Floridians. Saving you from that... <laughs> Just saving you from that Florida water, dude. <laughs> Just keeping you out of that Florida water. That's all it is. That's, that's a good point, though. That's very true. Can you imagine you and Heath become like Florida men? <laughs> Do you two Florida men rob a bank in bunny suits with peanut butter on their nut sacks? Yep. Like that. Yep. Yeah, that's a, that's a Florida man. <laughs> that's definitely a Florida man. Well, sincerely, thank you all so much for coming out tonight. We really, really appreciate it. Um,